All right, so this is take two. I'm talking about Magazine today, a highly influential post-punk band you might not have heard of. So it's it's one of those weird kind of bands that's obviously well-known enough that people have heard of them, but they still fly under the radar. They're not like, I, I don't think they have superstar status or anything like that. So... The main member to a lot of people would be Howard Devoto. He had been a lead singer of the Buzzcocks, and they were also a popular group among the punk rock scene in the UK. Influential, relatively short lived, you know, like a lot of the great punk bands were. And Devoto had remained active in music with the breakup of the Buzzcocks, and one of the bands that he created was Magazine, and he was basically the front man. They recorded five studio albums, but split up for a second and possibly final time in 2011. Unfortunately, the guitarist John McGeoch died in 2004 at the age of 48, and of course the band had many other members as well, including the composer Barry Adamson. Magazine were one of the most popular acts in British punk culture, and they remain low-key one of the most influential British bands of all time. And I say that because, again, they're sort of in that spot where people know who they are, but they're they're kind of increasingly forgotten over the the era, you know, the post-punk era, I suppose you might say. I mean, you had pop punk uh, that sort of emerged as a big force in the 1990s. But since then, you know, I think a lot of these pretty influential punk and post-punk punk bands have sort of... Um, they've slid further away from public awareness, I would say. And that's kind of why I'm highlighting them today, in addition to the basic fact that I'm trying to cover just about all bands and all forms of music on this little podcast, in addition to the political stuff that I do, and yada, yada, yada. So how influential were they? Well, as one example, the guitarist for Radiohead, Johnny Greenwood, said magazine songwriting informs so much of what we do. And that might not sound like such a big deal. I mean, it's just one guy, right? But Keep in mind, Radiohead are themselves one of the most well-known alternative rock bands out there, with their own albums being among those that really helped define the sound of alternative rock in the 1990s. Obviously, OK Computer is considered one of the iconic uh, albums of the 90s. I'm sure some people would put that right at the top of the list of, you know, albums that defined that decade. But going back to Magazine, I think their work has been variously described as art rock, alternative rock, electronic rock, post-punk, new wave, progressive rock, and new romantic. I would even say I hear elements of shoegaze in their stuff. And I'm not really sure exactly, like, what their main genre would be, but it seems to be post-punk is what I most often hear associated with them. Although I'm not sure. I'm I'm really not sure. I think some people might just say they're a rock band, you know? Following the breakup of the punk band Buzzcocks in early 1977, uh, he chose to create a new band with fewer of the musical strictures associated with punk you know, Howard DeVoto did, which is why they're considered among the first post-punk bands. And that might be why that particular genre label is so associated with them, because they were one of the, I guess, the early bands to do that, to uh, kind of pave the way for that sound and that style. And if you want to hear some good cover versions of one of their songs, Definitely check out The Light Pours Out of Me, 
which has been covered by several other acts, including Peter Murphy, Ministry, The Mission, Sleep Chamber, and Zero Boys. So I've really only listened to the Ministry version, and that's actually pretty good. It's actually one of the best songs off of their Anamostamina, or whatever that album is. I have a hard time pronouncing it. But that's one of the best best songs from that Ministry album. I would recommend, like, if you're only going to listen to one song from that album, that one might actually be it, honestly. It's a, it's a good song originally, and it's actually a, a pretty good cover. Like, I would say it rivals Magazine's version, if not betters it. And, uh, you know, Ministry does not always do good cover songs, as far as I'm concerned. But that one actually makes it. I think. So really, I mean, I, I don't really have that much more to say about Magazine. I would just recommend you listen to their stuff. I'm sure you might understand why they were so influential. And it's it's really one of those things that is just best to listen to them. So go ahead and get cracking. They're my recommendation of the day. So yeah, have a good one.